December 9th. Welcome to Six Scale. Um, add yourself as, as an attendee, please, and the link to the documents in the chat. Okay, um, so just a few topics today um, that I wanted to talk about. So we, we actually merged both the tracing and the VM pool work, which is really good news. Let me open these up. I think VM pools merged, I think I saw that. You know, it's tracing, yeah, it did, okay, good. Um, so I wanted to talk about some of the next steps in these because um, I think there's a lot we can do with each of these. Um, we have, uh, we can, a lot that we can do next on these. So uh, let me list out some things here. So what I'm thinking, so this is just, um, this was just the vert controller, this tracing. Um, we can add this anywhere into all the controllers. So, I mean, that's one of them. Like, so that was vert controller. We, I think it makes sense to do vert handler. Um, in the work queue, the vert launcher work queue. I'm not sure what else though. What, uh, where else would we want to have this? Oh, maybe vert API. Okay. I think they're the main ones. Vert API work queue. Did, okay. And then, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, it's like, I think it's pretty similar across these three controllers, like in the, basically the, I, so I don't know if what, how it looks in Vert API, but at least for these, there should just be an update status function call and then a sync function call that is part of that execute loop in the work queue. Mm -hmm. So it almost should be the same, or the same code as, as the controller. I don't know how it looks in the Vert API. Um, yeah, so awesome. that'll be the same. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, and, those are what I have in mind. Yeah. Yeah, good. And after that, maybe, you know, in the, in the audit tool, could find a way like to parse it, to have some summary, you know, because like after running that for a long, you know, long experiment, it might be very hard to, to check everything in the logs you know, mm. the, the trace and maybe it might be some, some good way to summarize, you know, have the average of this latency or P9, you know, P95 or something like that, you know, collect off, collect all of this data from the trace and, and, and print a summary, but it's just like next, next step, you know, it's just a future thing that might help to, to easier, easily analyze this. Yeah. Um, just a parser, you know. Yeah. Um, I think like one of way to also like, maybe that's, that's harder and that's for the future. Like with the tracing, you, you can also like consider like this open tracing and and uh, make sure that that this kind of like it's not just just this uh, usual um, logging stuff. Uh, it's it's more like this this Jager and and everything. So so that would uh, help to get more like depth into into what, what's happening. And with this spans, you can like more easily um, like see what, what's what's happening where we spent the time and how how long uh, did like every every call uh last and as uh, so i think like maybe that's that's for for uh for the future but i think this would be like really great to have like this open tracing uh functionality uh, there as well yeah, Marcelo, you talked about this, uh, or, or was it you who talked about this? Uh, yeah, you 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 must you wrote a comment. Uh, you you wrote a comment on on the tracing PR about this, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think maybe we can we can definitely discuss in the future about the open tracing, although it probably has some challenges, like uh, you know, um, open trace 
re the real open trace uh, implementation, we need to forward context and and define where a request starts and things can get very complicated for that. Especially Kubernetes, they even don't have a consent of that. There are a lot of people discussing if they really should have that in Kubernetes or not because of the asynchronous behavior. An example, for example, for example, you can create um, a persistent volume when you create a pod, you know, in the same, you know, um, flow, or you can create a persistent volume before, and then you create a pod and attach, and then it makes very hard, you know, to, you know, to forward contacts for to follow requests. Anyway, just just something that it's it might be something hard, you know, to to do, but we definitely can have something. It doesn't need to be perfect, but have something in the future for that. But but before, since we already have this, this simple trace now, it might be something interesting to, to have a parser. Um, well, I, wonder, I wonder if any of the CI at all does, um, if like when we gather logs, like if we look at any information specifically and pick it out because I mean right this is only going to be logs when we when it's slow like we don't have metrics around this that would be interesting actually but it's not in the library right now like it's there is no at least I didn't see any way to like have metrics around it if we were slow that would be interesting though do we need metrics though because we have uh we have work key metrics don't we so we know how long yeah. the work key so if we're running for example a density test and the uh, work queue exceeds our threshold, then when we dump something like logs, we can gain more insight. So we'd be able to dump all the logs for, for handlers and whatever else. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess like, um, I think we, when we've done some studies like, you know, on this work queue and the lengths of the work queue, I think, um, I think maybe we just need to maybe maybe we just need to get more comfortable with that, like the lengths of them and you know what we expect, and maybe that's just what we're missing here. Do we not have a so we have the length of the work queue? Don't we have a metric that tells us how long the keys are being worked on as well? Yeah. So. Not, the, not Go ahead. Yeah, not specifically which what which key what which what's doing, but like in average, how long the key stays there and what's the, the longest time it stays in the queue and the longest time it the key is processed, something like that. We have two metrics. Yeah, but we don't know which key actually, I think sure. We don't know which key. So I think the thing that would be helpful is um, maybe, so let's, let's say we get uh, to the point where we see that we've exceeded a threshold. The next step for us to debug and kind of gain an understanding of why from a developer perspective would be to understand what key was it um, perhaps, and was there something unique about this scenario versus all the other ones, if it was kind of an outlier, um, that would be, kind of tricky. You just have to parse logs to find which one was the one that took a really long time uh, looking at the traces. So maybe there's some tooling and stuff to help with that, but really that's grep, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, I mean, like, I guess the way if it's just, um, I, I think this would maybe be, I think, I guess, like with tracing now, we, we have the capability if we wanted to as a developer now to see this. It, it just, in the question, I guess, is in CI, like, I think, I mean, it would be, I think it, there's some advancements we probably need to do first to get to this, but I, yeah, I mean, I guess there is a path here. Like if we see that, you know, work queues are long, we see that keys are hanging around a little bit. We now have the logs, we'd have to, you know, have these traces in the logs, we could, we could get that information if we, if we really needed it. Okay.
I mean, I think that's, I mean, that's, I think that's pretty good. I mean, that's at least a path forward if this is something that we eventually want to have around, you know, for, for debugging. But I mean, I think it's good for now, at least, I mean, the point of tracing, right, was just so that we can have the capability to, to look at, you know, what key and maybe, you know, specifically like what function was, was slower than what we expected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's even, a, there's even to the question of like, I, right now we're at one second for, for the, um, the time. I mean, I don't like, it could be, that could be slow. It could be fast. I don't know. I mean, we're just, we'll start with that too. So like, we have to like, we, we need to see like, you know, how long, you know, when, like there's still a lot of information here, a lot of unknowns, I think. Kind of want to see like, as this, you know, as this kind of matures a little bit, as maybe we see some more tracing and some of these work cues, let's see what comes out of it. Uh, see what information we learn. And, but uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a good question that we can, I think we can hold on to and something we can look at, I think, in, down the road. Um, <clears throat> the other item was the, so VM pools merged. I think it merged this morning, David. Um, I wanted to see, you know, what are the, some of the, the other items that we could, uh, what are the next steps on this? Uh, some of the PRs we could have after this. Yeah, so the next PRs are to start fleshing out the API. Um, the initial PR was, uh, just the default behavior. So if you made a virtual machine pool and you just created uh, the virtual machine template portion of that and you set how many replicas you want and you didn't set any of those other options that we talk about in the design, that's the behavior that you get today. So we need to start layering in uh, the different uh, update and I forget what the other strategy um, parameters were, but that's, that's it. And the code is structured in a way that really shouldn't be that difficult. I think uh, the main advantage of not adding those uh, right away is that it's going to take longer to develop the testing around a lot of these features, like the, the more advanced tunings than it is going to be to develop the feature itself. Okay. So you got the different scale in, scale up behaviors and other some metrics, I think, that were in there um, that we can look at. Um, I think you had in there the burst rating, the burst level, I think. I, think I, I do. Uh, that's kind of an internal tuning. So it's not something you could set on the VM pool spec itself. It's a oh, okay. um, it's similar to the virtual machine replica set where we set a burst count uh, for how many VMs that can be created in one reconcile loop. Uh, and it doesn't do a whole, it doesn't really limit us much. It's just, it's going to be the round trip of the creation of, I think, 250 virtual machines to the point where the informer tells us that we've seen all 250. They don't even have mm -hmm. to boot. So it's just once we've seen them, we'll create another 250. So it's not, it's not a, it just keeps us maybe from slamming the API server, but we have other limits for that as well. So yep. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, a bunch of stuff here, um, and then I think the uh, the secret and um, config map, uh, the unique secret and config map integration. Yeah, that's another one that needs to be added. That would follow the same pattern that we use for indexing the um, data volume templates. So we have to create a unique index for every single um, virtual machine we would use the same logic for the secret and config maps to ensure that we have a unique. So you said it was, you said it was the same logic as the data volume, uh, data volumes. Yes. So okay. when we, uh, in the virtual machine templates, there's a data volume template section and okay. we have to create a unique data volume for every VM. Uh, so it's the same. Okay sort of idea not we're not creating secrets or config maps but we are referencing a unique secret and config map when those parameters are set okay is there a um out of these things that we're we're looking at for your adoption of this feature um is there something that stands out as being a higher priority than others um i think uh let's see 
I think it's the, the biggest two is the scale and scale up behaviors. I think particularly the scale in behavior, having control, um, having all the control there. Uh, I think some of the ones you mentioned with labels, I think that was like sort of the MVP that I consider for that scale and control. And then this, and then this one here, the, the unique config map and secret for each VM is the other one. Okay. And then these, yeah, are more of things that nice to have. Makes sense. Okay. Um, I'll see what I can work on. Might be next year. We'll see though. Yeah. We only have I think, one yeah, more so, full working week <laughs> next yeah. week. That's the last. Yeah, there's not much left. The um, and then I'm thinking. So there's uh, there's also someone from Nvidia that um, that I think is interested in helping on this too. Um, so I'll, I'll ask him to join. Um, I don't think he's been to one of the, these meetings yet. So I'll ask him to join one of these, and um, we'll see. Um, he actually did talk with me in the last Kubert Summit, and um, he was the one who talked to me when we we originally like brought about this topic as a general idea of kind of a, when he talked about it as a job. So I think um, I can bring him up to speed on this and then uh, you know, maybe he can take one of these and help you out. Sure, yeah, let me know and I can help task out, <clears throat> task out some of this stuff. Sure, okay, cool, very cool. All right, awesome. All right, um, so let's see, last just one, item. Yeah. Can we come back to the tracing? Um, sure. I just like put here again, the snapshot. This is the previous task that we saw before last meeting. Okay. You know the work queue. So just to try to see what how we can leverage you know this you know tracing things. So here I think it's creating 400, 600, and 800 gems, three worker nodes, and and then. You see the, the queue duration is the time that the key stays in the queue and the work duration is the time that the keys process. It's it's surprising because they have the same time, but let's assume that everything is fine. But it's always takes 10 seconds. So it doesn't matter if it's, oh, it's, it stays for a long time, uh, if we have 800, you it's know, it's like um, 90. What, what's the percentile? Of this? I think it's 95. I probably can check the JSON. Oh, you see all the data. Uh, is it like a, if you go, yeah, below, I think. Is it is there a keyword I can search for? Or percentile or something? Yeah, go to the maybe the lower part. If you try to find a search queue, only the, the word queue. Or is it oh, doesn't search there. Um, what's in the dashboard here? So I didn't expect, is it like a, no, no, if you would just open it. Hmm. I, I, I probably, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, 10 seconds, like it seemed like it would be, I mean, if we were this on okay. average, it'd probably be slow. It's nine, nine, nine to nine. 99 percent okay yeah the worst case yeah okay well so yeah so is it your point that when we find this we want to know like what key it is like we go look in the logs and try and find this i mean that's what i would expect right like we would because we have a we have one key here that's slow so we should be able to because 10 seconds is way over the threshold of one second right so i mean we, sh we should be able to see it right that's right but we don't have well we don't have tracing here actually we do here in this one now you have it here. So maybe okay. this is just something we can do for next time. Um, now that it's merged, Marcel, when you, next time you do your tests, that would actually be a good thing to keep an eye out for, to see if we can find this this key. 
yeah it's it sounds interesting and the other yeah. thing is the unfinished work you see the work queue unfinished work yeah you know this you know explodes for 800 i'm not really sure it's very hard to understand this matter but yeah i mean i i think this is where i'm hoping tracing will kind of enlighten us a little bit because i i, I don't quite like i re read the docs on this and i just but i just i can't visualize this like what what is what do they really mean by this you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like thread that gets stuck so i don't know maybe you know david that knows better the code can what do you think which thread can get stuck you know in processing something root handler or any of the reconcile threads could get stuck conceivably um the, the thing that concerns me the most about vert handler taking a long time is the communication channel between vert handler and vert launcher so sometimes there's a synchronous thing that has to occur where we have this kind of chain of um of commands we say vert handler wants to tell vert launcher to do something vert launcher then tells uh lib vert to do something and then we are waiting that entire execution is waiting on libvert to give us a response and sometimes we time out that context if we don't get it in time but that, that's the area that's most problematic so this might be something for trace isn't it like yeah. trace would give us information there also we would see a, a deadline exceeded uh, on our connection to libvert every once in a while we'll see that with the grpc call and again that's in the logs as well. Um, I, I would certainly be interested in uh, anytime we do a sync VMI, uh, that's that's the one that can cause the vert to, I think that's the one, the primary one. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I mean, let's add some tracing in these areas. And let's see if we can find these. I, I really, I'm really interested, Marcelo, if like, and this next test, because I mean, we, we've seen this for a while. Like, I mean, we've noticed when you did, when you first brought these to our attention, like, mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering, you know, if we can, if the if tracing will be able to point out this key now. Um, yeah, we, especially in the controller. So I, it's something to keep an eye out for. We need to do your next set of tests See if you can locate this key now that we have that tracing in, in place. Yeah. Okay. It's good. All right. Well, and then we, as, as we had more, you know, maybe we'll find some more, um, get some more clarity on some of this. Yeah. And some of these, like minute twenty, and let's try to eliminate some of these. Okay. Um, all right. So we finished the VM pool. Uh, okay. So the last one is the performance CI job. So I wanted to just look over the data again. Um, oh, I don't know where. I'm. See if there's been um, a little bit more consistency in some variance of the previous. But we're still kind of where we were. Okay. 35, 39, 47. Let's take a look. Okay. Mostly similar, especially on the 50 and 95. Pretty good. Maybe two, a little faster. Thirty-one. 
34. I'm kind of sitting in the 30s, a little mid 30s. That's pretty good. Are these all the same, by the way? I don't know the difference between these three. Is it the overall? It just says density. I'm assuming the same test, we get the same, we get the similar output, it looks like. Should be only one test. So. Yeah, I mean, do you know why it shows up as three here? I mean, I don't know if it's, it might just be one test, but I mean, there may be just, this is the different reports or something. I don't know how that, that works. Mm -hmm. 31 and, I don't know if it's there. Time out. Seven. I don't know what to make of this one. So I guess the looks like the cluster didn't come up. Is that what this is? And then how did it get in water? I guess maybe it was a grabbed a previous one or something. I'm not sure what to make of this one. Hmm. It's just an outlier. Let's see, maybe a few more. Many fails. They do have a lot of failures. Oh, wow. And they went away. Oh, maybe this was the this was before um, the change that got pushed in. That's probably what it is. Or the, the binary just wasn't there. Another timeout. Not failing though. I don't know where we're getting this data. If uh, The, um, the cluster didn't. So cluster was not installed. Is it? Yeah. I'm actually I'm having some problem right now with the newest code. Like when before, I don't know when it's happened. I thought it was something. I I I don't know if it was happening with the other tests. What I mean is. Normally, in my environment, when I install Kubevir, I use provider external and I do make cluster sync and it's automatically installed Kubevir, in it? Um, however, it's not working anymore for me. It's gets stuck. So it's not stalling things. So it's like uh, in the in the hack, cluster deploy script it's gets its traps to dump the data from kubevir and and then it does it stops and doesn't install anything i'm actually trying to debug what's happening i'm just trying to do right now this why it's not you know it's it's actually breaking in the script um, but I thought it's, it could be something is it with my in, Is it breaking and make cluster up or, or, or make cluster it's server not, or is it breaking in the audit tool? Cluster sync. Okay. So it's not cluster up. Cluster up creates the cluster. So, and the uh, cluster sync, it's deploys Kubevir. Mm -hmm. I thought it could be something with my environment, but since I'm seeing that Kubevir is not being installed in the tests also here, Maybe I've something seen it. changed. Something someone changed something. And it's not working anymore. I've not run sure. into this this issue that that we saw earlier with plus, with keyword not being solved pretty recently. But it's it's gone away though. It was I mean that was like a week and a half ago. Okay, so it's know. working now. Yeah. Okay. Well, never mind. Yeah. Here we have a slower one. So thirty nine. This is like the slowest P fifty I've found so far. And it would actually be nice if we could aggregate some of those values. Round, yeah. 35 round. So 52. Yeah, so this one was just right around. This was really quick for everything. Wow, everything went well here. And then at least I'm going to put these two next to each other. So the. OK, so this one is kind of interesting. 31. 39, 39, 39, 52, 58. 
it's interesting how we, um, I wonder if it, let's see if it affects any of the API call counts. Yes, like the speed. I think last, last time we, we were discussing something about that, you know, like the number of calls in the APIs. So create podcast, so 679 create events. So actually more create events. Pure create podcasts. Okay, gets, pure gets. So the create pound counts. It's it's the time that create pod is being called. Yes, that's the idea. But it's it's creates one hundred <laughs> uh, pods, isn't it? It should. Let's see uh, what what are the counts. Um, it's not a precise because okay. there's some it's some average. Well, yeah, yeah kind of it's over a time period a we do account uh i think it's the the technical expression used is called increase in prometheus so increase rate over uh this period of time so we're looking at a counter we're looking at how much it increased over a period of time and i think that prometheus interpolates does some sort of interpolation to to get a result there but i would expect it to be within uh, let's see, where, where are we actually at? Create, we would expect, what, 100? And we got 63. That's not great. That's not great either. I think we should investigate that, understand that a little bit. Um, maybe we uh, need to give a buffer time um, for how far back we go on uh, the perf audit. So maybe we're missing like the first 30 seconds or something like that of the density test. Mm -hmm. Or, or miss, missing like just a really brief, we, we definitely account for the time after a test, but we don't account great for the time, perhaps the first, um, yeah, the first time we actually uh, get a data point. Okay. Yeah, I was expecting to have some approximation, but maybe I'm close pretty to frustrated. 100. Yeah, yeah, that this doesn't give us really accurate uh, data. It gives us some sort of strange. I, I, I don't exactly know what Prometheus is doing here, uh, <laughs> and I don't like it. That's the best way to describe it. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I think. Well, it, yeah, I would like to see, like, I would like, yeah, I think, like you're saying, like, I, it would be nice to, to for Prometheus to tell us with, like, with some certainty, the number of pods it's seen. Like, I would feel more comfortable if we knew that. Yeah. Because that, that, that's pretty important in terms of how we interpret uh, this data. So is the, is the metric your gauge? Because... Let, let me show you. Uh, I'll, I'll show you everything. Let's take a look. Um, so first we'll look at the metric. It's perf scale. Um, where did I put that? No, I think I put that in the client. ones I added. Yeah. So what we're looking at are, uh, this is the specific metric that we're looking at. I'll put it in the chat. Right. This is what we're calling on the um, audit tool side. Uh, mm. And the percent %s in this command I'm posting is uh, filled in Where's the chat? It's filled in based on the, the time period that we give per audit. And that 
request clients, whatever we're calling it, uh, total is a counter vec uh, vector. Oh, okay, so when you do increase, it takes on the last two points, isn't it? It drops everything. When we do an increase, it does. I think like it, it takes all the points in the time window and it takes only the last two points, isn't it? And and drops. That's not great. Let's see. Yeah, I think that that's the problem with the increase. <laughs> I don't okay. Increase. Uh... Yeah, I don't understand what you're saying, Marcelo. Like I thought so I understand increase to be like it's a it's it's like turns the counter into like a vector. So it's like a period of time to it. So it just grabs the the, the, last the change. Oh, the change. I, here's the documentation. Okay, let's let's double check. I don't. I'm not. Calculate the sure. increase in the time series in the range vector. So we give it a range, and it's supposed to tell us how much it increased in that range. That was my. Okay, I was confused with. Increases uh, extrapolated to cover the full time range as specified in the range vector selector. So it is possible to get a non-integer result, even if the counter increases by only integer increments. So it's that extrapolation, whatever is going on, mm -hmm. th that's given us, I think that has something to do with the strange results we're getting. And they even give an example. Shall only be used with counters, okay? Yeah. We are using a counter. Yeah, I was confused with I rate, so sorry. Increase is fine. Should be fine. And okay, maybe it's our use of rate, but I think you have to use rate in order to. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Did I? Use, let me see. Did my command use a rate increase no i don't use a rate i just use increase exactly like in the example it says use rate in recording rules so that increases are tracked consistently on a per second basis i, I don't know what that means Maybe, maybe, maybe the problem is what you said for, you know, we are not getting the full time range of the experiment. That's possible. We can add more fluff uh, or buffer to the how far back we go. Mm -hmm. um, that could cause problems if we um, had multiple tests running because we might accidentally overlap with the previous test. But the fact that this density test is only one, a one shot thing, it shouldn't be a problem. I, I can add that. Let's see. Well, uh, what was the, um, I, I cause remember we talked about this and I can remember the V, I, we looked at, we talked about VMI face count. I added this, but it doesn't work because it's after, right? Like I'm checking after the test is run. Is that what's going on here? I forgot why that didn't work. We don't let me see. Right. So we don't have we only get the phase count um, of the current like snapshot, like that point in time. We don't get the the phase count over uh, and however long the test took. I mean that, well think about that. That'd be kind of strange because each um, each VMI goes through uh, different phases. So right. we would we could get information about each phase that we saw, but I'm not sure what it would give us. We just get some lots of values. Yeah, because it, because it's a gauge, it'll be I mean, like it'll be zeros for all the. Um, yeah, it, it would it would essentially we the only way for this to work would be that felt with this phase count was be we'd have to do it during the test. We have to do it. We'd have to we have to capture the phase count right after. Um, the density test finished its creates is what we have to do. 
then it would have a then we'd have our account that way. But we don't run the audit tool though at that point. We'd have to run the audit tool right after. So we we do density this. This, this is well. This is the that's now remember. Okay, this was the to do that I had to do on density. Marcella, do you know if do in the density test do we delete right after like like it creates a hundred and then it immediately deletes? This was the thing that I. It's it deletes, but it doesn't wait to the deletion because it's like just exits and the the tests take care of deletes everything. Yeah. But I mean, like. Uh, where is this? It's in, it's in hack, I think. Um, no, it doesn't have a specific command to delete. So that's what I'm saying. So the, the functional test, you know, when you, it exits, it has a clean, you know, to clean the test. And then it's, I think it deletes the namespace. So it's, and then it exits. So. Okay, and here it is. So, create and then wait. Okay, so create and wait. Okay, and then um, um, where's the audit? Oh, the audit tool gets run after, right? Oh, hold on. Okay, no, hold this. So it's in the it's in tools, I think. In this um, tools and then. Yeah, but since we don't wait for the deletion, when the auto, you know, auto tool runs, it maybe it's still deleting the nodes, the the, the VMIs. Um, isn't where's the bash script that runs this? You mean the one that the, runs the, the job? performance test? Yeah, it's, it's hack um, hack slash perf tests dot sh. Okay, so the what is it? Yeah, perf test. Oh, there it is. Okay, this one. Okay, so in here we do the trigger the functional tests right here. And then we sleep and then we run the audit tool for fun. I okay. said we add another, another sleep before the test actually runs. So the start the start timestamp would have like a 30 second buffer before we ran the test. And then we have another 30 second buffer afterwards. Maybe that. Yep. Okay. Try that. It might might do the trick, yeah. So the well the other thing is like so we do you do the perf test this creates so let's look at this perf test it creates the VMs this is it right here creates all the VMs and what's like does so it doesn't wait for it to for them to exit what is it what's the last thing it does create I think it just waits to see that they are running yeah, yeah. so wait so let's see they're running um what's that tab so we wait until they're running and then um and then what then we just then we run perf audit so what okay. would like prevent us from seeing the number of VM, running vms at that i don't have a great explanation other than maybe we are missing the first um sample so maybe we're not going far enough back to get the first sample for some reason like if I think we do, we pull a sample every 30 seconds on Prometheus. If uh, that 30 seconds, if a bunch of VM uh, VMs get created uh, before the first uh, sample is taken, then maybe we miss those because it's like between the start time. Let's look okay. Let me make a timeline for us. Uh, we have the start time. We have perf test starting, we have VMIs getting created, we have the first sample getting taken by Prometheus, and uh, maybe there's a few other samples that get taken. Uh, the perf test ends and then we call perf audit. The perf audit goes back to the start time. I'm not sure if it's taking the, I'm not sure which sample it starts with. 
if it was between two samples. So maybe we have to go back and ensure that doesn't make any sense to me what I'm saying. So would you think it would just the sleep <laughs> 30 would be like after the start timestamp? So we so we give it another 30 seconds in between before this perf test runs, 30 seconds to capture the sample. And then so that we just extend our start to we extend our start to end time window, essentially. We we can try that. I'm gonna be honest here and say uh, I have no idea what uh, Prometheus is doing and why. My inclination is to just try things until we <laughs> understand the behavior. We're, we're basically performing the scientific yeah. method of Prometheus because this makes no sense. <laughs> okay, that's fine. All right, the, um, okay. I, I still think like, where is this? Um, I still think that the, like when I, when I do this, um, this count, wherever it is, I don't know where it is now, this thing, when I do this, this should technically work. Like it's after at this point, since we don't do cleanup, when we capture the sample, it should we capture the up. number of, but, but we don't, well, when we, but wait, when we run. Oh, we might not, we might not. So we, let me right explain at this point, right? why I said we that. Don't, when we run a uh, functional test, after the fun functional test completes, if it's our normal framework, we, we tear everything down all the yeah. VMIs down before we exit. So perf test yeah. would run and then potentially tear everything down by the time it exits. If it uses our normal framework, it might not. It's it's the normal framework and it deletes, but it doesn't wait for the deletion. That's what it was for me. Wait, so uh, you have no it, idea what you'll get then when perf yeah. audit runs afterwards. They might all be deleted, uh, they might not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay then sometimes so we, maybe you can see sometimes not but you know if perf audit passed sorry if the perf test passes that all the vmis that were created hit a running state mm -hmm. so you you know what the expected outcome there should be okay so when we know they're right uh, so that's maybe well, that's what the mystery is right it's like we've hit 100 at this point but like we can't explain we can't explain the metrics they don't seem like it was a hundred, right? They don't yeah. So sense. it's like, so like, how, how can we reconcile this? So this, would this be like, we do the cleanup here, like after this, like we just kind of, as part of the functional test, we kind of, we don't do the cleanup. Like, can we go outside the framework? Is that, would that make sense? Or do we like- We can, but for what purpose? Is it to try to um, understand the metrics that we're getting better? Or yeah. I think I trust the, um, perf test that all of the VMIs are running, I think that the metrics just aren't accurate. I got, I would, um, I don't have any doubts that if we left the perf test, I have very little doubt that we left it to perf test results running, that we would get to um, after the perf test ran and see that all 100 VMIs were created in, in a running state. That would be really surprising to me if they weren't. Yeah, I, I, well, I agree with you. I'm, I'm mostly like, I don't know. I'm in like disbelief of what we're seeing from the API calls. <laughs> like, how, I don't know how to, how do I, I don't know how to interpret this. Like, what, what does that mean? Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. How can we have such variation in this? A decimal point doesn't make any sense to me. Well, well but like, no, you have, you, no, but you have the increase that, that I, you have the increase metric here. That makes sense. I understand why we're getting that. It's just, why is it this not a hundred or over a hundred? I mean, why is it less than hundred? Why is it so much variation? I don't understand that. Let's look at the create. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. The uh, VMI was being created by the test. Never mind. So the create events is, is always this almost the same, isn't it? The great well, parts that. Yeah, I mean, I I would expect it to be, right? I mean, I yeah, but it to be. Uh, no, events are different. Create events is um, every time we post an event to a VMI. So that would be like uh, the VMI is uh, been defined. It's uh, starting. It started. It's stopping. It stopped. 
Um, those are all events. And every time we post one of those, uh, that's a create of a type event. So I, I'm not surprised about seeing a whole lot of those. Um, yeah. Wow, so those actually look kind of consistent. Out of exactly. Curiosity, they are consistent, how, they are consistent, more or less. But yeah. the point is, great pods goes 40 and 60, but the events keeps the same. Isn't it? Yeah. So it's something specifically with this great pods. I mean, overall, the numbers are patch or pat, I mean, there is some variation. I wouldn't be surprised to see some of the update calls vary because we can have collisions there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we're looking to anchor on anything concrete, we know that create can only be called a specific number of times and that the way our, our controllers are structured, it should be called exactly a hundred times. Unless there's some sort of API failure, like we call create and the API wasn't available. Maybe we would call it multiple times, but I would certainly expect at least a hundred, like exactly a hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, like we can add like sleep. I, we can just yeah. see if it changes the results. Um, and, and if it doesn't, we're going to have to go deep into understanding Prometheus and why uh, this result isn't what we expect. Because, like, for instance, like, look at here's like with 40, like, we have less VMs, like, you know, this could affect this, right? I mean, here's more, and now we're, you know, we're, our 95 is going up because maybe, yeah. we're, you know, that's going to affect our threshold. Or could affect the threshold. I mean, if, if I understand what this actually means, like, so, but, okay. I mean, Those I guess- Those are calculated so, differently. So I feel more confident about the histogram than I do the create pods count. Um, so the histogram is mm -hmm. probably fairly representative of what's happening. Yeah, it's like, okay. you know, averages and all that. But it's that increase operation occurring over a vector that's unique for, the counts of the API endpoints, that's something different. And that's the one that's giving us kind of crazy results. I wonder if there's a different um, way of getting this data. If I should just, increase is the only way I know to count over a time period though. If there was a different way to count, like an absolute way of counting over a time period, I'd be way more interested in it than whatever it's extrapolating data somehow. I mean, to we could we could try, I mean, this would be kind of funny, but we, we, you, we could take a sample right before and we'll know the create and then we can take it after, right? <laughs> That's what increase is supposed to be doing, right? Like that, that, that could tell us that's interesting. Yeah, we just take the count at that point in time and subtract them. I mean, it would give us all values, but that would, um, I mean, I'm not sure, like, I mean, to do that, we'd have to, uh, we'd have to do, I mean, I guess, what, we, what do we do? We run audit tool. I, yeah, I mean, is there any harm in that, like running audit tool right beforehand? Well, I could just make audit tool do that. It could take, it could do its own interpolation. You could take a um so don't do an increase like just take it at the moment in time for a count i would work? retroactively look at exactly what happened mm -hmm. that time period ago and then i would look at what's happened in the new time period and then i would just create a count out of that myself okay i can investigate that that would be interesting to um do just to see if we, okay, so if we are looking at um, a completely fresh environment and I do a, uh, I wanna see how many pod creations occurred at the start, that should always be zero. If it's not zero, that's really curious because there's nothing in our API that creates uh, pods 
Uh, yeah. We create things like deployments and stuff like that and bird operator, but we don't, the one time we create a pod that I'm aware of is for VMI. Maybe for sanity. I, I like, I think it would be interesting that we, we, I like, I, I could see value in us actually printing that value out at the start and at the end. And then a difference be, just because like, I mean, right now, at least like we're, this is a shared environment, right? For the, like, it would just be interesting. And also just for the way we're interpreting this, it would be good to know. I think, I mean, that would at least provide, a, I think a lot of credibility to like how we're interpreting this. Yeah, if we had that data, the before and after, it, I think would make it really clear. And just, you know, in case there's anything else going on, who knows. I think the only thing that we can do with the current way that perf scale audit is gathering metrics is to put a sleep before the perf test. Because we run perf scale audit beforehand and we don't have a time range necessarily that makes any sense. Well, that's, I mean, you, the other way you suggested was that um, you just look at the one point in time, right? With the count. I yeah, mean, that, that, that would be the same thing. Change. Like yeah, a, that, that, just, yeah, yeah, that that would be the same. I I think then I think that's fine. I like in terms of like, because otherwise if we run perf test beforehand, um, yeah, I mean it gets it gets the same thing, but um, it's probably better for I, like my point is like I I don't care either way. If we do perf test run beforehand, or if we get the count of like right before we start the test, the time before we start the test, like. Maybe we just like you subtract a little bit from timestamp to just gather the start, like like ten seconds or something before it. Do you have the count right before the start, and then just right after? And then I think that would provide a lot of credibility in terms of what we're reading. Yeah. So same thing is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, what should we start with? Do we start with just a, a case? Should we do like a start add a, a sleep thirty as our, or do you want to just do the code change? What do we want to do with this? The easiest thing to begin gathering uh, some sort of data back would be to add the sleep before the perf test and understand if that has any impact on our results. And that would give us a clue. Uh, making the code changes and things like that, um, it's gonna be a challenge for when that can get right. done. Okay, and I, this is something I, I might take, um, because this is something I just wanted to do. I just probably won't be gonna get to it this week, maybe next week. The the um, and then the sleep 30 would go before a start timestamp or before perf test? No, after. <laughs> yeah, definitely after start. Right between 85 and 86. That's where we Yeah, do. okay. So we do, yeah, so we do it and then we give our 30 minute buffer in the meeting. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I'm not expecting that necessarily to help, but it at least lets us know. If it does help, that's going to be so bizarre. <laughs> Debugging, anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I think the point is, if the problem maybe if it's the met with the metric, if it, we are missing some event, you know, just wondering about that. It can yeah, be it's even possible. Worse. I think it's pretty easy for us to check. Um, we run something like um, this perf test locally with like a small sample set, like maybe 10 virtual machines, and then inspect the Prometheus uh directly so do a um like get get the um number of pods that were created before the test ran a time before the test ran and look at a sample after the test ran and see if those make sense and if they don't make sense then and um, we're certainly not going to get a correct increase operation over that time period mm. but if they do make sense and we do see, oh, 10 pods were created because I only started 10 VMs in my local test. Then we run that increase command and we get something like five or whatever, then yeah, it's just Prometheus being weird. Yeah, we, we, can, we can test that easily. Yeah. So the other um, thing, uh, what was I looking at? Counter can only go up, right? So yeah, so it's not like we're gonna get, 
we're not going to be affected by deletes or anything. Okay. That way it wouldn't matter actually. We're just talking about create requests. Okay. Um, okay. That would be the other thing we could do. All right. All right. I think that gives us the path forward on this. Okay. Good. All right. We're over time, guys. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, we'll see you all next week. I think is we, is tomorrow like a full or next week a full working week? I think it is, right? Yeah. December. It's the last yeah. one. For last one, right? Most people right. at least. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll see you guys next week at this time. Okay. All right. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.